Here we go. <laughs> he made it. This is the Teva Run Tetra. This is awesome. <laughs> he just sprayed me with ice. Thanks, Andrew. We've reviewed a lot of interesting, strange, and unique things on this channel before. Never have we tried a four-wheeled scooter, an ATV-type scooter. <laughs> this thing's amazing. All right, Andrew is just having way too much fun on this. Today, we're gonna be checking this out and telling you if you should buy the Teverun Tetra. We have this crazy four-wheel contraption here, which has a massive 3,600 watt-hour battery. So it's a 60 volt, 60 amp hour battery, dual 1,500 watt motors with a peak output of 5,000 watts, has a max speed of 34 miles per hour, and I don't know, this thing is pretty wild. The usable deck space is just slightly under 10 inches. It's over 21 inches, but if you start at the kick plate, it's about 20 inches. The handlebar height from the deck is about 37 and a half inches, and the handlebar width is 26 inches. And the deck height is pretty high, but the biggest issue I see is the clearance on the front. So I was really surprised that this only has less than four inches of clearance. I really do worry about clearance on any area that has a little bit higher rocks or roots. And then the other thing you wanna know is how wide this is. Can this fit through a traditional door? The width is close to 27 inches, so you should fit through a traditional door, but it's pretty challenging. I find myself when I'm trying to walk this, I run into my feet a lot and run over the heels of my shoes. So the easiest is trying to walk on the side, but it is kind of unwieldy. In the rear, you have a very similar design to the front. You don't have that quite center mount that's going in there, so you have a little bit more clearance. 260 millimeter brake disc with two piston hydraulic brakes, a LED light in the kick plate, and also a brake light, and it does get brighter. It is blocked by the center chassis brake. It does have a smart BMS, so you can see exactly where your battery cells are all powered at. You can adjust the lights on the LEDs. The app is pretty nice to be able to change a lot of different settings on the scooter. So don't be deceived by the two-star rating. Or the one-star rating. Because it's actually a one-star rating. You know, one thing I do want to note, we are almost at 100 million views. So thank you, everyone, your subscribes, your likes, your views, your comments. It's you guys that help keep us motivated to make videos about things like this. We are going to get this charged up, get our safety gear on, and I can't wait to try out this four-wheeled beast. What's up, guys? Here we are with the Teveron Tetra. We've been ripping around in the state park, in the neighborhoods, on all different types of terrain, and this thing is a lot of fun. We're gonna go find a place where we can tell you what we love about it, what we hate about it, and whether or not we think you should buy this. Whoa, you, you gotta watch your tires, man. If you're a big time scooter rider, you're used to your wheels right under you. Instead, you're much wider, so. Twice there, Andrew's left tires almost fell off the curb because he was going so close to the edge. <laughs> So one thing about this is the suspension is, it's all right. It absorbs the small bumps and cracks well, but anything that's bigger, like that type of dropping stuff, it's a little bit jarring, but you just need to use your knees, you know? You've got built-in suspension on yourself. That right there was pretty soft gravel, loose gravel. Got a little squirrely for me. Andrew had, took it no problem. Trying to take things fast and tight turns is not the strength of this. You're right. Yeah, but I am all right. You can initiate your sharp turn, but when you're trying to take a really, really sharp turn, it just wants to kind of step back straight. And so basically I was initiating the turn. It went straight back up was running me into this. I went to hit on the brakes and the front brakes are stronger than the rear brakes. So I almost went over the handlebars, as you can see. Now I know, don't take turns too tight. The nice thing is, is we've tried different terrains with this right now. We've tried it from sand, loose gravel, packed gravel, asphalt, concrete, snow, ice. Man, this thing is pretty insane. And it's handled everything pretty well. By far my favorite ice PV, maybe 
until I try that, that electric snowboard. That might be my favorite one too. <laughs> so make sure you stay tuned. We've got the electric snowboard coming up soon and be sure to like and subscribe to support the channel. And so just to be clear, just the two rear wheels have the motors. No motors in the front, so it's rear wheel drive. Let's see, we've got a dirt road here. It's going uphill. Let's see how it does. Trying to go straight on something that's pitched like this, you're pretty much leaning. And then when you're leaning, it starts to want to turn on you. I probably could do this. I just have to make sure if I'm going to be riding on this side, my body weights to the left. So this is a completely different experience from riding a scooter or a bike because you ride a bike on this angle here and you're fine but here you can't help but start leaning over andrew just started tipping and then just fell over so you can do it you just have to really focus on your body position All right, we are having a good time with the first ever, uh, I don't even, is this considered a scooter? What, what is this called? Four-wheeled scooter, Four -wheeled maybe? Scooter. Stand up ATV, that's what I'm going with. We're gonna stop here and talk about the things that we like about this Teva Run Tetra. Number one thing is, it is a ton of fun to ride. I am mind blown a little bit today, scared a little bit, but a good scared. The fun factor definitely is high. The new factor is also high. We've tried a lot of different devices and every now and then you come across a device that just resonates with you. It's something different, right? It was like that when we first rode the one wheel, when we first rode the electric unicycle, when we first rode the flight board. And now it's the same with this. It's a very different experience from anything we've ever ridden. The stand up ATV style. It feels very stable at times, but because it's different, sometimes it feels unstable. And that adds to the fun factor. We're learning as we're going along. The oversized tires can really tackle any terrain out there. We've had this on sand, dirt, all sorts of different things, snow, ice, and it rides great. It feels like it has perfect traction. It feels a little bit squirrely, but nothing like I would feel on a scooter, EUC, or one wheel, especially in like loose sand or soft snow. This thing looks so aggressive. I mean, there's one thing about making a four-wheeled electric device, stand-up ATV or an electric scooter, but to make it look so rugged and tough. And this thing definitely turns heads. It gets people asking questions. And we haven't really had that experience in a while. We had a lot of questions asked when we first started riding the one wheel before anyone else was riding the one wheel. We were, had a lot of questions about the electric unicycle, the flight board, just because they were new. People hadn't seen them before. It's the same thing with this. So it's gonna draw attention. People are going to wanna stop you and ask you questions about this. And for me, that's kind of fun. The deck is nice and big so I can shuffle my feet around change my posture depending on if I need to lean or not. It's got these nice controllable LED lights that are on the deck and you also have the light in the kick plate. The NFC card reader is great for added security if you're going to be locking this up outside or trying to prevent your kids from taking off on it. The TFT LCD display is really crisp and clear. You can see it easily in direct sunlight. Nice control modules. The throttle is nice because there is no dead zone. Hydraulic brakes work well, except for there is one issue and we'll talk about that in things that we don't like. I do like what they've done with their cable management. The cables are hidden in the poles. There's nice cable wrap here. And then lastly for me, the whole ride feel experience, it's really nice. I like that I can tilt and lean in order to gently turn and carve as I'm riding. I personally prefer trigger or half twist throttles but the thumb throttle on this is pretty good. And the Tetra uses sine wave controller, so it's smooth acceleration. It's not that jerky acceleration that you get from square wave. To add to what I like about these tires is they didn't use scooter tires. Scooter tires are really boxy. The tread's kind of awkward or really knobby. This is just a light off-road tread with a nice rounded profile, so you don't feel like you're getting stuck on the flat edges of a tire. One of my favorite features about the Bluetooth app is that it does have a smart BMS. I can check each individual cell to see if there's any type of imbalance and if I need to rebalance the battery cells. So it's great for keeping your batteries healthy and also for fire safety. Also, we've had great customer service from the dealer that's in North America and Canada, Super Scoots. Anytime I've ever had a question about this, I had an update failure, I was able to call them up, they picked up, they knew exactly what the issues were and were able to resolve it extremely fast. We're gonna keep riding at our next stop. We're gonna talk about what we don't like about this four-wheeled scooter.
Okay, we are going to test this four-wheeled monster on the sand. So Andrew is trying to get it up that sandy hill and uh, was having some problems. What do you think was going on, Andrew? The bottom end torque on this isn't very strong. Once you get this thing moving, it works perfectly fine. But I have noticed that the low end torque could be definitely improved. This thing is awesome and sad. It's a little bit sluggish to get it going, but once you get moving, it's ultra stable. You don't ever feel like you're sinking in too far and very easy to power slide on. Definitely have to be more aware of your surroundings because I'm not used to having something so big taking up so much room and area underneath me. You're getting the hang of it. Yeah, it takes a little bit. It's very different from anything you've ever ridden before. It's a combination of leaning and turning and there is still balance required even though it's got four wheels. The Tevron Tetra, it's a lot of fun. It's probably the first type of device in its class that we know about and being such, it's not perfect. And we're gonna talk about the different flaws, the different gripes that we have with this device so that we can give that feedback to Teverun and they can make improvements. The biggest issue I have with this is the noise. It's really loud. So PEVs are known for being stealthy, silent, quiet. This is rattly, noisy, a lot of moving parts, which leads me to my next thing is that this isn't gonna be your maintenance-free PEV. I've already had to adjust a bunch of things on it, from the fenders to the way the wheels are towed in and out, from the steering pull that's gotten a little bit loose. So there's a lot of adjustments with this. If you're looking for a maintenance-free PEV, this really is not it. This horn is extremely weak. It's almost laughable how loud this horn is. Another issue is, is how you update the scooter. It took over 10 minutes for it to update and the display turned off. It just cut out in the middle and I was unable to get the update to work, get my phone to connect correctly. So they should have been very clear about changing the settings in the display to keep it on longer than 10 minutes. So you won't have your scooter time out during the update. The turn signals, they're blocked by everything of the chassis. So the front chassis is blocking those turn signals. The rear chassis is blocking the rear turn signals. So when I'm riding with traffic, I want the motorists behind me and in front of me to know my next move because this is not a super nimble, super quick device. I'm not quite sure what the engineers were thinking by putting these lights on the inside where you're basically not going to be able to see it. And then the front light, it's bright, but it's extremely narrow. So if you can see the throw on my shirt, I would like for that to be a wider throw for the light. And this light is on a lot of scooters. It's pretty bad. The bottom cable has created an issue with the brake lines. The brake lines in the rear have gotten pinched in both areas. So you can see there's a little bit of pinching right there. And there's a lot of bit of pinching over here. The rear brakes actually work, but I have to pump them. So the first pump you'll see, I can fully compress it. When I go to do the second pump, it's starting to build some pressure. So essentially when I come into power slide, I have to like pump the brakes to get them to work. This is the first in North America and our feedback will make this only better. This is gonna be the worst version you'll ever see. It's their demo unit. It's only going to get better. So you guys leave some feedback down below. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are from what you've seen in our video so that we can make this thing a successful, amazing product. Probably my most disgruntled thing besides the noise that this scooter makes is the low end torque. It's really weak. I have a lot of issues trying to get up steep parts. If I'm going and moving, climbing up the steep parts is perfectly fine. But from a standstill on any type of pitch, it really struggles. You have to understand what you're getting yourself into. This is a big device. And so it's going to take up a lot of room. This will be a problem for some people, not a problem for others. When you fold it, it doesn't lock and so that's swinging all over the place. Biggest things on my wish list for something like this, upgrade that horn and make it so that the app is more streamlined when we're doing updates to this device. My biggest wish list is make things a little bit more solid so they're not so rattly, bring more power to the bottom end torque and then find a way to fix the braking system. But really it's a lot of fun and we're hoping that this feedback will make this product even better. Like I said, this product will only get better. We're gonna keep riding. As we ride, we're gonna talk about whether or not we think you should buy the Tevron Tetra. buy 
buy this if you're mechanically inclined because it's gonna take a little bit of tinkering. You should also buy this if you have tons of experience with PEVs and you're looking for a very unique ride experience. You need to be someone with actually pretty good balance because it takes some skill, agility, and balance to ride this device. So we were riding all over the place. We ran out of batteries as we were pulling into the block to come home. And final stats show we got about just under 17 miles of range and we have a top speed of about 33-ish miles per hour. Check out our full written review at freshlycharged.com. If you have any other questions, leave them down in the comments below and make sure when you guys ride, wear your safety gear.